Mm, I cannot hear you. Yes, no? Yes. Wonderful. So before I introduce myself, who I am, I see a lot of uh, student crowd here. I love students. I love talking to students. So let me introduce you. Let me introduce myself to you with a small introduction. Can you all hold your hands like this? Yeah, to your chest right away, and put your fingers out. Yeah. Now look at your fingers. Look at your fingers. Open your fingers up, and look at your fingers and say. My fingers are closing. My fingers are closing. Look at your fingers. Don't see anywhere else. Look at your fingers and say, my fingers are closing. My fingers are closing. My fingers are closing. My fingers are closing. Is it closing towards? Yes? yes? yes. Students, yes or no? Yes. Wonderful. Now, close your eyes and think about the most beautiful peacock you have ever seen opening its feathers and dancing under rain. Can we, can we all take two seconds for it? Yeah, just close your eyes. Think of the most beautiful peacock dancing with its feathers opened under rain. And now again, put your fingers like this and look at your fingers saying, my fingers are not closing. My fingers are not going towards each other. My fingers are not going towards each other. Can you see a friction in your fingers now? Yes or no? It's not moving towards, right? Like the first time, the second time, the fingers are not moving towards each other. It's because your brain is controlling you. And who are we? Who am I? I'm the brain controller for everybody. So I'm Shanmati, founder and CVO of Vitivice, the brain trainers. So what is about this brain training thing? So I was known uh, about with the smile, okay? Everybody who sees me for the first time say, you have a very beautiful smile. And I'm an extrovert. I talk a lot. So I, I wanted to do a small flashback about um, seven to eight year old me, where I was an introvert. I was a depressed little child um, where I was body shamed. So you thinking about body shaming, everybody would think I was very fat. Yes, yes, I was. <laughs> and. Uh, to talk about fat, everybody would think like a tomato, the biggest tomato here. Unfortunately, that was not the case. I was like the pumpkin here. Yeah. So I was uh, the most fattest kid in the family and I was body shamed. And uh, everybody who see me will be like, okay, you want another packet of biscuit? Yes, I need. And that was the uh, entire vision or the goal for my entire day. If I get two packets of biscuit and four dairy milks, that's my day. I'm very happy about it. So uh, I was uh, in a matter of time where you started hating your biscuits and uh, your uh, chocolates. I thought um, this is not life. Why are people looking at my body and shaming me for this? Yes, I'm looking very fat. So I started criticizing myself. I started hating myself saying that, yes, I'm fat. Nobody is going to like me. Nobody is going to like me. And then. Um, my mom enrolled me in dance class to lose my weight. Basically, that was the purpose of me making me to enroll in the dance class to make me lose weight. So what happened is when the dance master asked me to, you know, I don't know how many of you know about Bharatanatyam here. They ask you to make Aramandi like this, half sit. So I was so angry at people who was mocking at me that uh, the first step for you is this Aramandi. It's just five seconds. You have to sit for just five seconds in that half sitting position. I was so angry, angry on people that with that, that pumpkin body, I could stay in that Aramandi position for almost 15 to 20 seconds. Then I was happy that, okay, because I'm angry, I'm doing something. So whenever I do shows, I will make myself angry. Okay, I'm going to get think about these people, I'm going to get angry and I'm going to perform. And this repeated and this helped me a lot. Yes, it did happen. Whenever I went into a stage show, um, I, there was, uh, when I was 12, I could dance for eight continuous songs without any break, just change dress and come back to stage and dance for eight continuous songs. And I still was thinking that because I was angry at people. Every time I go and change, I will think about, okay, these people made me made mock, mocking at me. So I'm going to think about it and energize myself. 
But surprisingly, what happened was uh, at the age of uh, 18 to 20, I happened to realize that is not because of the anger I got on people which made me perform in a tremendous way. The anger which was the root cause of the focus on myself made me do performance in a greater extent. So when you think about uh, doing performance, we all think here a lot of dignitaries say, believe in yourself. You can do what you want. Envision yourself. So these are the value yourself. These are the, these are the statements a lot of big dignitaries have given you. But I will, yes, they, these are all byproducts, but where does it come from? A lot of times, do you think, you think when you are alone and you think about your vision, you think about your goal, do you think you are thinking? Do you think you are thinking? Okay, if I ask one student uh, about what is your five years plan, he will say, okay, this, uh, I'm going to be the entrepreneur of a startup company and I'm going to raise a seed fund of like $2 billion. That might be one of the goal. But if you ask that person, did you think all by yourself? It is a no. It is because you would have learned from something, uh, you would have seen some inspiration from the paper, and through that, you develop your own inspiration. So, I wanted to break down a hard truth fact here that if you think you're thinking, you're wrong. A lot of times, if you think you're thinking, you're stopping yourself and listening to somebody out. You're listening, you're not thinking. How come if I am going to talk to these students here and they are going to understand, there might be one or two students who might not relate to what I speak. Yes or no? I cannot, uh, I cannot go and uh, st stand in the stage and satisfy 100% of the people. But, yes, how, how is that I am sounding to you and it makes relevance to you is because if you are in the same page, if you are in the same value, it makes relevance to you. So where did this all come from? That is my second learning in life. Okay, I've spoken about the grumpy kid where uh, it, she was angry on her, she was angry on the society. And after 21 to 22 years of age, the second part of the life where everybody will go through is love, right? Yes or no? True, true, <laughs> okay, good, so, yes. So, love, that, uh, um, a, a young kid who was grumpy, who felt the most unbeautiful, who felt like an ugly duckling, um, had to come across a man who was in love with that ugly duckling for 14 long years. Can you all believe? Yes. A person who has made that ugly duckling feel really gorgeous. Yes. And the man is here, my husband. Can I ask him to raise? <laughs> so, thank you. Um, when it comes to love, it is not about just looks. It's not about people uh, just having uh, fun, going around. Love is a lot more than that. It's about perseverance to hold hands with each other through the thickest and toughest times. I'm very sorry. Um, um, post that, we had to go through a lot of things in life. And coming to passion, what I'm doing is I'm running a company called Witty Vice where I'm the founder and CEO. CVO, the, the lady here would have mentioned. We, CVO is about the visionary, about the success. So when, when did I find this vision is when we were holding our hands together towards better life. So my husband has a passion towards going to acting in movies. And that happened after um, when I was actually about to deliver my baby. So what happened is what do you think a wife will do when this happens? When your husband has a passion and the wife has just delivered the baby, what do you think the wife will ask the husband to do? Stay in where you are, right? 
but i must say i'm a proud wife of my husband that i took a warrior uh, place where i may i asked him i i i mean if it is not that any anybody could give permission to anybody to go and follow their passion but we still hold hands each other to follow our passions so he is now in the media industry in doing his own skills uh, uh, whatever in the acting and all and uh, i took care of the family to help him and also to i mean we hold hands each other it's not very easy for a guy to sit down there and to appreciate a woman on stage when it comes to a long journey of a womanhood so uh, that time when we envisioned that i had three things in mind as a woman first generation women entrepreneur i i usually say so i had to look upon few women who had already done that right yes it is that is how it will happen so if my mom was an entrepreneur if i see somebody as an entrepreneur if i see somebody as a mentor somebody here told me told us that uh, in 20 to 30 you must have a mentor to go up in life i sir is not there but unfortunately i i didn't have any any mentor so who 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 is my mentor who was the mentor was I, i'll tell you who is it later but now uh, in that point of time where uh, that three things which i realized is number one why is women why is women empowerment or women in business always has to come with a cry story and why is it is always you have to break the barriers and be a warrior it's not the case and the last thing is why is it always opposite to the next gender why is it always women against men have you all ever thought about this question why is it always men versus women girls versus boys it's always the case but i had that hard truth which i had to break here is in every woman there is a man in every man there is a woman that is called ardhanarishwara how many of you know ardhana arishwara what does that say is that everybody has a myth saying that man and women are equal but that is not what ardhana arishwara says in every man there is a percentage of women inside which comes out when a comfort zone of that particular thing comes so you can all think about it when were you all feminine were you crying yes that's a feminism feminism i i i could say a woman can cry a man can also cry who 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 is a woman what is woman built for what is a woman built for a woman is built for nurturing the other person a man is built the man's body a physique is built to go and conquer am i right so if a lady here standing doing business going out doing meetings going and meeting a lot of people the ardhana arishwara has come out so now a problem with a lot of younger generation now is there is no balance between the man and women that's the problem here if a woman thinks she is above man there's a problem if the man thinks i'm above a woman and there's also a problem that is the balance we are missing in the future generation so that is why i we started this organization called witty wise to train the younger generation to say yes knowledge is very 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 important but who you are as a person will determine not only you not only the nation but the entire universe because you sitting here with a positive energy will not only contaminate the each and every person if every single person inside the room but also people outside who are watching this video and the person who watch the video it spreads over and over so this is what about, this is what about who you are as a person and the last part about uh my company is uh when you find out your values i am a person who is very inquisitive um the the little lady here who has mentioned that inquisitiveness is the mother of all inventions and curiosity is the by product of it inquisitiveness and curiosity are two different things so i was a little kid asking why is the sky dark what is above the sky so what happens after this so when when you started uh, when you start a business when you go for a work 
the number one question which you had to be very, very strong enough is why? So a lot of people came and asked me, why witty wise? If I didn't have a strong why, I could not have survived for the last five years. And I will tell you what is that why. I was in a school where I was teaching uh, the people, uh, the students about the values and ethics and all these things. And there was one class which I had to talk about the suicides. And uh, there was emotional EQ, emotional quotient inside the family. There were around 120 students inside that class. And post that class, I happened to see 70 of that students came to me and started crying. Because every single family has a problem and that is affecting the kid inside the family. If, I, if a kid could come and share the problem, family problem to a somebody, a stranger like me, just because I spoke to them for one hour and they could change their lives forever and I could change within their lives within an hour, what do you think, my, what else could I think for a value and why can be? That is my why. And I envision the same for the next 60 years. When I'm 60, I'm going to be at least impacting 10,000 lives and I'm going to change the lives of those people around. That is my why. And now I wanted to close this, uh, my talk about my raw story uh, with one strong, not quote, one strong um, thought. If everybody here believes in God, if everybody believes in uh, some natural superior force around you, I'm saying it's not around you, it's within you. If you could find yourself without any intentions that who you are as a person, you're going to flourish from that point onwards. It's not somebody who is body shamed. It's not somebody from outside who could push you, trigger you, motivate you. It's only you who, if you could, if the you inside you will trigger you, motivate you and push you towards what you want. And I, I would like to um, close this with one small Telugu quote, which I saw in a recent movie where uh, it, is, it goes like this. Apesi Odipoina Undar Kani Praetanestu Odipoina Vru Leru. So start taking efforts. Your Praetanam will definitely will give you results. And I am here with all that envisioning, um, doing all my Praetanam to be here and uh, with all that, and one last thing, sorry, I'm taking one more thing. Um, surrender yourself to the higher power. It may be God, it may be your consciousness, it may be within you. Because as I already said, you're not thinking, you're listening. If you want to listen to good things which should happen in your life and you have to fight against the resistance, stop thinking and start listening and surrender your heart, your mind, to the universe. That will make it happen. Thank you all. Thank you. And I am taking this uh, stage to thank Mr. Bala Subramaniam Jayam uh, because my vision and Bala's vision was a very big equal to because he wants to inspire lives. I want to transform them. So we all working together to make the nation better. Thank you.